Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Monday, November 16th. I'm Wayne Pratt. School closures in the spring were a major disruption to education worldwide. But in countries such as Germany, schools reopened much faster than in the United States. And parents in that country worried less about the long-term impact. On the whole, I, I don't feel that my kids have lost a year, no. St. Louis Public Radio's Ryan Delaney reports from Germany in just a few minutes. BJC Healthcare and Washington University physicians will stop a majority of elective surgeries and procedures starting today. Officials are postponing those procedures until mid-January as hospitals brace for a surge of COVID-19 patients. Hospital admissions in the region are setting records. In the past week, hospitals admitted more than 100 people a day for COVID-19. BJC is the largest provider in the region. Its network of 15 hospitals is nearing capacity for ICU beds. Thanksgiving break will mark the end of in-person classes for tens of thousands of students in the St. Louis region. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake reports how several colleges are making changes to reduce the spread of coronavirus on campus. Several St. Louis area universities plan to finish the fall semester virtually, including Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, Lindenwood University, and Harristow State University. After Thanksgiving break, the University of Missouri and Columbia will also switch all of its classes to be online only. Residential students are encouraged to move out before the holiday and not return until the spring semester. Michael Schultz is the COVID coordinator for SIUE. He says ending in-person classes will keep cases from rising after holiday travel. We're encouraging students to, when they shift their bubble, to shift it one way and not to, to shift both ways. University officials also recommend that students be tested before going home. I'm Kayla Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. New research is examining how the controversial weed killer dicamba is spreading. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports the focus is at the molecular level. Researchers at Washington University are examining how dicamba molecularly bonds with other chemicals sprayed at the same time. Some combos might add to the weed killer's drift away from the intended fields. Kimberly Parker is leading the study. She says increasing the knowledge of bonds in dicamba is a first step. I think ultimately the work we're doing to build a better molecular picture, I think would hopefully improve and inform the design of better chemicals. Parker says more research will be needed to come up with better options for dicamba. Her team's initial findings were published in the journal Environmental Science and Technology. In Rolla, I'm Jonathan All. St. Louis Public Radio. University of Illinois professor Jonathan Coppice is among 17 volunteer experts in agriculture chosen to help the transition of the incoming Biden-Harris administration. Coppice will help prepare and advise the incoming U.S. Department of Agriculture. The transition website says the goal of the review team is to ensure a smooth transfer of power and, quote, hit the ground running on day one. Coppice served in the Obama administration as administrator of the Farm Service Agency, that's a branch of USDA. He became an assistant professor at the University of Illinois in 2013. His research focuses on agricultural law, natural resource conservation, and biofuels. Many students in Missouri have not been in a school since March. For some parents and teachers, it's starting to feel like a lost year. But in Europe, schools have reopened much sooner. In partnership with the Pulitzer Center, St. Louis Public Radio's Ryan Delaney reports from Germany. Three- and four-year-old children squirm on the carpet in a classroom at Rainbow Trekkers Kindergarten in Cologne, Germany. Their teachers try to get them to sit somewhat still for circle time, which starts with a song. Jeder Tag ist neu und jeder Tag ist 
Every day is new, and every day is different, the children sing. But one thing that's changed little this year is their daily presence in a classroom. A prompt reduction of COVID-19 cases in Germany by late spring allowed children of all ages to return to school. The children here have been able to play freely, with no social distancing or mask rules. Eva Sekolovich, the director of the Rainbow Trekkers Kindergarten, says it would be crazy to try to impose those kinds of restrictions, but she still worries about this group of kids growing up. Because we can't imagine now how it will affect their social development. And I'm um, a little bit, I have to say, um, afraid for this COVID-19 generation and how it will look like in 15 years. But because the school closures have been much shorter than in some other countries, German parents worry less that the pandemic is robbing their children of a future. Jason Benedict, an American raising a family in Berlin, says he doesn't feel like it's been a lost year, the way his friends in the U.S. talk about. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. that that's, that's one of the struggles that I've been hearing in different places with the time that's lost. The amount of time spent on schooling in Germany dropped by about half while schools were closed during the spring lockdown. The time kids spent on their phones went up. Julia Capetta is the mother to two teenage boys in Berlin. Her oldest, who's 16, did fine with online learning. The younger of the two boys has a learning disability and struggled with homeschooling. Literally, he did nothing. But despite that... On the whole, I I don't feel that my kids have lost a year, no. A generation of kids not receiving a full education will have long-term impacts. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development estimates just a quarter of a year of lost education could reduce a child's lifetime earnings by 3% as an adult. Andreas Schleiser is the director of education at OECD. He says children in countries where school closures were twice as long will be even worse off. He says it was nearsighted of some countries, such as the United States, that reopened bars and restaurants while schools remained closed. And I think that's really very hard to justify versus the future generation. We have given priority to sort of people who live today and less to the ones who, you know, will be our future. Online learning was challenging in Germany, but attendance bounced right back this fall when students resumed consistent in-person learning. Katharina Spies studies education and economics at the Free University of Berlin. She says school closures in Germany have still been more harmful to students whose families are poor or don't speak German fluently. We now have a situation where everybody is aware that this really means a lot for children and for different kind of students, that this means that differences in education, education inequality might increase. Overall, poverty and inequality are less pronounced in Europe than the United States, and Germany continues to fare better controlling the virus than its European neighbors. For now, governments have ordered schools closed again in Italy, the Czech Republic, and Poland. Belgian schools are complaining of a shortage of teachers healthy enough to be in the classroom. The government here in Germany is trying to spare schools in a second round of lockdowns, but that'll only last if the pandemic is brought back under control. As new restrictions come down, Benedict, the parent in Berlin, is even more thankful his children have been back in school. And then there's this maybe heightened awareness that it's precarious and that it could could go away at any moment, depending on how things change. In Berlin, Germany, I'm Ryan Delaney, St. Louis Public Radio. This story was produced with support from the Pulitzer Center and the Education Writers Association. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.